Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you a little bit about how to create calculated columns in Microsoft SQL Server queries. In this session what we'll cover is how to create calculations. We'll start by showing you where to write your calculations in a select statement. Then we'll move on and show you how you can use the results of calculations in order by clause. We'll show you how you can use criteria using your calculations. We'll mention that you should take care with different data types in your calculations and explain what we mean by that. And we'll finish off by showing you some more examples of calculations. So let's get started. So as an example of a calculated field, we're going to work out the profit or loss of each film in this database. And we're going to do that by subtracting the budget of the film from its box office takings. So I already have this basic query set up. What I'd like to see is a new column showing me the profit loss figure for each film. To do that, I need to add a new field or a new column to my select list. And I'm going to simply type in my calculation, film box office dollars, minus, uh, you can use all of the other standard operators, plus, multiplies, divides, etc. And film box office dollars, minus film budget dollars. And all I need to do now is execute my query to see my results. There we go. Just to tidy things up, I think I'll add a quick alias to my field as well. So I'll call this as Film Profit Loss. And if I execute the query one more time, there we go. A symbol calculated field. You can sort a query based on a calculated column, just as though it was a built-in column in a table. The best way to do this is by first of all adding an alias to your calculated column, just as I have done here, Film Profit Loss. So I'm going to add an order by clause to the end of my select statement and I'm going to choose to order by my film profit loss. In this particular version of Management Studio I get my alias appearing in the IntelliSense list so I don't even have to type the whole thing in, I'll just press the tab key at this point. I'd like to sort in descending order so that I see the most profitable film at the top of the list and all I need to do now is execute the query and there we go my results sorted by my calculated column. You can also use the results of a calculation in a WHERE clause to add criteria to a query. So for example, perhaps I want to show only the films in my database which had made a loss, so where the film profit loss is less than zero. Unfortunately, things aren't quite as simple as in an order by clause. Let me add a WHERE clause to my statement. I'm going to try to use my alias Film Profit Loss, where Film Profit Loss is less than zero. Now you can already see in this version of Management Studio that it underlines the, uh, the, the alias in red. And if I try to execute this query, it's not going to work. You can't use a field alias in the WHERE clause. Unfortunately, what that means is I have to repeat the entire calculation, so I'm going to replace the alias here with the original expression film box office dollars minus film budget dollars. If I add that in, I can now execute the query to show all the films where the profit loss value was less than zero. It isn't 100% essential, but sometimes it makes sense and it can make things look a little bit more obvious to either yourself or somebody else reading your query if you wrap the expression in a set of round brackets or parentheses. It makes no effect to this particular query. Exactly the same results. It can just make things a little bit easier to read. So that's how you use a calculated column in a WHERE clause. You effectively have to repeat the calculation again. One thing that can easily trip you up when you're working with calculated columns in SQL Server is the data type that you're working with. SQL Server is terrible at implicitly converting one data type to another. It always relies on you to explicitly convert data types. I want to give you an example of what I mean by that and show you where it can cause issues. So what I have here so far is a simple query that shows me the films and their running time in minutes. I'd like to see the running time in hours. So for instance, if the film was, was uh, 150 minutes long, I'd like to see the running time in hours as 2.5. So to do that, I'm going to try to divide the film at runtime in minutes by 60. I'll give it a quick alias as well, uh, runtime hours, and if I execute the query, 
I might be a little bit disappointed in the results that I get. So Jurassic Park is 127 minutes, just over two hours, but the running time in hours is calculated as exactly two. Superman Returns is 154 minutes, so just over two and a half hours, except that it comes out as exactly two as well. The problem that I'm having here, or the reason this is happening, is because of the data types of the fields or the values that are passed into the calculation. If I hover the mouse over the Film Runtime Minutes field, I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but in a little tooltip it tells me that that field contains int data, int is short for integer or a whole number. I'm dividing one whole number by another whole number, the value 60, and because I've fed two whole numbers into the calculation, I'm going to get a whole number as the result. Now there are various complicated ways of changing the data types from whole numbers to decimals. But as a quick, simple, uh, cheat way to do it almost in this example, I can change one of my values into a decimal by simply adding a point zero to the end of it. So now I'm feeding one whole number and one decimal value into my calculation, and that has a dramatic effect on the results of my query if I execute this. You can see now that I'm getting a much more accurate reflection of the answer. So that's one thing to be very careful of. In a future tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use functions to make sure you're always working with the correct data type. But for now, that's all I want to say. So just to complete this short tutorial, I'd like to mention a couple of the other operators that we haven't seen yet. So you've already encountered uh, minus and divides. What I'd like to do in this short example is show you multiplies and plus. Uh, hopefully you'll find these reasonably obvious and straightforward. What I'm going to do here is calculate a tax on my films based on how much money they made. I'm going to take 20%. Sounds a little bit unfair, but there we go. Film box office dollars multiplied by, which is the same symbol as you'll find in Excel or Microsoft Access. It's the asterisk symbol. Uh, I'm going to multiply by 0 0.2 and give this a quick alias as film tax. If I execute this query, I'll see my results. What I want to do now is add that tax value to the original film budget to work out a total. So in order to do that, I'll add another field and I'll say film budget dollars this time, plus, which hopefully as you'd expect is exactly the same symbol you'd use in Excel and Microsoft Access and so on. Now unfortunately I can't refer to the field called film tax because when the query runs it wouldn't actually technically exist at that point. So just as we showed you when we looked at the WHERE clause, I need to add my calculation in again. So I'm going to copy the entire calculation. I'm going to add a set of round brackets at this point as well and give this a quick alias and call it film total. If I run this query now, it'll add the, val add the results of the first calculation to the original film budget field and give me the final total. So that's using the multiplies and plus operators. The final operator we're going to talk about is something you might have heard referred to as the mod or modulus operator in other applications. In SQL Server you use the percentage symbol as the modulus operator. What it does is takes one number, divides it by another, and then gives you the remainder of that division. So to demonstrate this, we're first of all going to calculate the film runtime in hours by dividing it by 60. Now all I want to see is the whole hours of a film running time. So if I execute this query, this gives me the full hours for each film, so 2 for Jurassic Park, etc. What I'd also like to see in a new column is the remaining minutes for that film. So I'm going to add a new field, film runtime minutes, and instead of using the divides by symbol, the forward slash, I'm going to use the percentage symbol instead. Percentage is the same as mod in other applications. If I give this a quick alias as minutes, when I execute this query, I'll get the combined hours and minutes for each film. So that completes the set of basic operators for our calculated columns in SQL Server. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.